All right, so this video is to serve as a review for determining molecular shape and drawing organic structures. So, determining molecular shape. Uh, first of all, bond length is the average distance between the centers of the two nuclei that are bound together. And then, if we uh, go across a period, we have a CH, NH, and OH bond if we're comparing those. As we go from right to left, we have an increase in bond length. Okay, and so that's because we have a smaller atom for oxygen. And so here's a picture to kind of help you better understand that. It's, it's the distance between the two nuclei. If it's a smaller atom, they can just get closer together. And so that distance is going to be smaller. So that makes sense, right? Um, carbon being bigger than oxygen, bound to the same atom, hydrogen, it's going to have a longer bond. Groups within a group, though, if we have HF, HCl, HBr, as we go from left to right, we have an increase in bond length in that case. Or I'm sorry, as we go from top to bottom, we in a group we have an increase in bond length, and that's because of fluorine being the smaller atom. Okay, let's take a look at bond angles because these are going to determine the shape of the molecule, and uh, remember, it's going to be based on the number of groups. Uh, of electron density that we have around that particular atom of interest, right? And so this is a reminder, Vesper theory, valence shell electron pair repulsion means that we have the, the most stable arrangement when we put the groups as far away from one another as possible. <clears throat> okay, so, oops, sorry, that was probably loud, my bad. Um, organic chemistry, we really just want to focus on uh, two, three, or four groups. And so we've saw this before, but we got two groups. We got the linear 180 degree acetylene. Uh, we got three groups. We've got formaldehyde. We've got trigonal planar, and the bond angles are 120 degrees. And then for four groups, we've got methane here and it's tetrahedral right and so the bond angle is not 90 as it's drawn but 109.5 degrees more uh more better a little better way to draw it would be wedges and dashes so um you'll probably see the wedge filled in with black but i draw it like empty like this because it's just easier to draw faster i don't need to color in the the wedge right so you understand that just to point it out so you see it for future reference that that's these are how this is how I will draw my dashes and my wedges. So the dash, remember, is um, projected back into the computer, while the or the computer screen, and then the wedges are projected out at us, or they they're kind of sticking out at us, out of the computer screen. And this is how we're going to draw three-dimensional molecules on two-dimensional paper, okay? So remember, wedges sticking out at us, dashes sticking into the screen, okay? Now let's take a look at uh, just the molecular geometry, some like kind of compar comparisons and kind of a review again on molecular geometry versus electron pair geometry. So we've got ammonia in H3. It's got three different uh, atoms on it plus um, the lone pair. So, whoops, I need to erase that. When we're looking at molecular geometry, we do not care about the lone pair, okay? And so, in this case, the ge molecular geometry of ammonia is trigonal pyramidal, okay? Because we ignore that lone pair, but that lone pair pushes down the hydrogens, okay? And then, when we do the electron pair geometry, we actually care about that lone pair. And since that's one of four groups, we have a tetrahedral electron pair geometry. All right, so let's take a look at another molecule. Here's water for you. <clears throat> for focusing on the molecular geometry, remember we don't care about the lone pairs and it's bent but the electron pair geometry, we do care. And there's four things around it. So it's tetrahedral, okay? 
So now, drawing organic structures. Now, there's two different ways we can do this, okay? Now, this is the super fun way where you draw out every single bond. Oh my goodness. And it takes forever, and I get lazy, and the hydrogens start to fall apart and look like fours, or terrible fours. Um, but there's a condensed structure, and there's also a skeletal structure. So the condensed structure, you can see, uh, will have... We start from left to right, and we have a CH3 first, and then we have four subsequent CH2s, and so we write a CH2 with the parentheses around it and a subscript 4. And then the last CH3 we draw uh, at the end. Okay. All right, so the skeletal structure is way cooler because it's just boom, 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 boom. That's it right there. Okay. So let's go over some more condensed and then we'll go over some uh, more skeletal. Okay. So the condensed structures, as you can see, take forever to draw out, and we don't like to do those, and so that's why we're teaching you how to draw the skeletal or the condensed, I'm sorry, um, the normal structures are take forever, and then the condensed and the skeletal are just make, make it way shorter, okay? So we always start from left to right. I'm going to highlight some portions in red, some portions in blue, and then leave some black. That way you can follow along to see what I'm writing down, okay? So the two on the left, those CH3 groups are pretty much looking the same, right? So we're going to put CH3, subscript 2, uh, and then we're going to draw, so I want to draw our CH that's in blue, because that's what they're bound to. And then that thing is bound to an oxygen, okay? And that oxygen's bound to a CH2, which is bound to another CH2 in blue, which is bound to a red CH2. And that red CH2 is bound to a black OH. Okay, so this is pretty much how we draw our condensed structures. We go from left to right, um, and that's it. We can simplify this CH2 sequence here by drawing a subscript 3 uh, and as follows. So, okay. Now, this is definitely going to take some practice, so you're just going to have to look at some and try them and try them again and keep going, and you'll get it eventually, but... Uh, yeah, it doesn't come easy. Neither did riding a bike, right? So, let's take a look at these sequences right here. Okay, so for we're going to have a variety of carbonyl compounds in organic chemistry, and we have to abbreviate them. So here are some examples of them. Carbonyl compounds are C double bond O compounds, okay? And so we've got an aldehyde, a ketone, carboxylic acid, and an ester. So looking at the upper left. So remember, when we're drawing the condensed formula, we start from left of the structure to the right. So we start with the CH3, and that CH3 is bound to a carbon, right? So we draw that carbon. That carbon is bound to a hydrogen from the aldehyde, and drawn in red. And then that, is, that portion is also bound to the oxygen, the carbonyl compound. Structure on the right is a little bit different. CH3CO now, and then the CH3 is on the end. So this is just some, some subtle nuance that we kind of have to draw out. And it just tells us where the oxygen is and where the hydrogen is, okay? So we need to know this. Let's see. The lower left is a carboxylic acid. That's CH3CO2. H. Now that H is on the outside because it's bound to the oxygen and not the carbon. For the last structure, the ester, it's a CH3CO2, then a CH3. So this makes more sense because the CH3 is on the end bound to the oxygen. The only one that's a little weird is the, car the ketone on the upper right, but it is helping us understand that there's a CO double bond in there. And so you need to know these structures like very well, know how to abbreviate them, know how to read them in their condensed format and translate to a structure, okay? So get that practice in. All right, so let's take a look at this. It's gonna be a really drawn out structure, so I'm gonna speed this up. So we'll draw the structure out first and then I'll draw it in a more condensed form, but not the condensed form. So 
we're just abbreviating with still bond, strong bonds in there. And now what we can do is start from left to right, drawing out the condensed format. CH3, which is bound to a CH2, but then there's another one, so we draw that parentheses around it with subscript 2. Then we draw the, car the ester, remember it's a CO2, and then C, which is bound to three CH3s. And so we have that parentheses around that CH3 with the subscript 3, okay? And there you have it. So uh, let's go to a uh, another practice problem, right? So this particular practice problem, well, I mean, you're gonna need to do more than whatever I do here with you, but then also just follow up with questions for me, okay? So convert each structure to Lewis structure. All right, so we have the CH3, CH2, subscript four, and then a CH, and then a CH3, subscript two. And so we start from left to right, CH3, CH2, and there's four of them. So we go boom, 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 boom. Get our last CH2 in there. And then that's bound to a CH. Let's draw that hydrogen. And that's bound to two CH3s. And so there you go. That's the structure. Easy peasy, right? Now let's try another one. So we've got CH3, subscript 3, C, CH, and then in parentheses we've got an OH, indicating it's an alcohol or those two are bound together. And then we've got a CH2, CH3, okay? So starting from left to right, we've got three CH3s. And so that has to be bound to that carbon that comes after it. And we got three of them on there. And that carbon is bound to a CH, which has an OH on it. And then it's also bound to a CH2. So we'll bring that off, and which is bound to a CH3. That one is a little bit more tricky, right? Because we got the weird branching or weird OH in there. <coughs> but still comes with practice. Now CH3 subscript 2, CH, CHO. So remember that CHO, that's an aldehyde. Okay, we should know that from looking at it. Now, that CH3, there's two of them which are bound to a CH, okay? And then that CH is bound to a carbon which is part of an aldehyde. So we have that carbonyl group and the hydrogen. All right, so that one is not so bad. Now, this one is a little cray. So it's got a lot going on, but we can do it. So we gotta do the hard ones too, right? Um, so we've got a lot of things in parentheses, okay? So we just start from left to right and then go from there. So the HOCH2 in parentheses two, that's a group that's coming off of that CH, okay? So we'll draw that CH first and then we'll draw the CH2, which is closest to the, that carbon because of the way that it's drawn. And then on the end is the OH and we've got two of those because it has a subscript two. So we'll draw another one. Now, coming off that CH is a sequence of three CH2s, okay? So boom, boom, boom. Now, uh, that last CH2 is bound to a carbon that has bound to two CH3s. So we'll draw CH3, CH3, and then it's also bound, after the parentheses, to a CH2, which is bound to a CH3, okay? And there you go. Oof. That is a wild one. Now moving on to an easier and quicker format too, the skeletal structure. I think they're easier and they're faster for sure. So skeletal structures, one, the carbons and the hydrogens are actually assumed when they're, when they're bound to one another. And, um, we just assume that they're there in order to satisfy an octet, right? Whatever we have to do to satisfy an octet, we imply hydrogens, okay? And then two, the carbon is represented by the point at which <clears throat> two lines come together, okay? And this can also just be the bend, right? In a, in a line or in a structure. And then also, 
they would be represented at the end of a line as well. Okay, so let's give you an example. Let me separate this for you. Now, the point at which two lines meet could be like this. That, that one right there, that point right there is the center point is where the two lines are meeting and it's bent, that line is bent and that's where a carbon is. And then at the end, there's also carbons. And so it would look like that, okay? And then we basically have those three carbons and fill each of those is bound to one another. So there's only one bond for the terminal carbons and two bonds for the central carbon. That means we need to fill in as many hydrogens to give it four bonds, okay? Now the number three, heteroatoms, not C or H, so not carbon or hydrogen, those are termed like heteroatoms. Those are drawn explicitly as well as any hydrogens bound to them. So for example, this structure here, we draw the nitrogen as well as the hydrogen bound to it. And that structure is meth. Pretty, pretty neat, huh? Fun fact about meth, it looks a lot like dopamine which also has a nitrogen and hydrogens and OHs too. You can see on that ring structure that I drew explicitly as well as the hydrogens bound to them. So you wanna talk about practice? Let's talk about practice. All right, Whew. we're gonna need practice, but um, here we go. All right, so this box right here and the two lines coming off, that's not a TV with antennas coming off. Uh, that is a chemical structure drawn in the skeletal form. And then we also got this bad boy here, which is gonna take forever to draw uh, with the chlorine on the end. And now what we wanna do is kind of fill in the blanks, right? How many, where are the carbons at? Where are the hydrogens at? So let's draw it out. And I encourage you always to pause the video and do these on your own before I show you the answers if we're doing practice problems, okay? So we've got all the carbons are either at the points, the bends, or the ends. And then you have to make sure to notice how many carbons or what, how many bonds that carbon has to other carbons. And then if it, so if it has one bond, then you need three hydrogens on it. If it has two bonds, then you need two hydrogens. If it has three bonds to carbon, then you would need one hydrogen. And if it has four bonds to carb to carbon other carbons, then you don't need any hydrogens. Okay, and so here's the answer to this problem. Hopefully you were able to get that one as well. This one's a little trickier because you gotta remember that there's two bonds on one side of the carbon with those out with those double bonds, and then a single on the other side. So there's one hydrogen on each of those uh, sp2 hybridized carbons, except for the one that has another methyl group on it. So um, there you go, that's that structure. All right, so let's try another problem. So what we wanna do now, I'm gonna draw out a couple structures, they're pretty big, so we're gonna draw them out first. And then um, the question is how many hydrogens are on the highlighted atom? So after I draw the structures out, I will highlight them for you in uh, whatever color, red or something. Uh, so we got this guy, you can see pretty, even with skeletal structures or this can, like skeletal format, we can still, it takes a while to draw things out. All right, so how many hydrogens are on the highlighted atom? So let's highlight in red, this guy, this guy, boom, boom. All right, and then this one, this one, this one, and this one. Okay, so it's just for the name. Uh, the top structure is octanoxate, and then uh, the bottom structure is avobenzone. Okay, so these are common ingredients in sunscreen, which, um, yeah, you probably need a lot around here. So, this far left structure basically, what you want to do is, or I'm sorry, the far left carbon, look at the carbon, see how many bonds it has, and then fill in the blanks for hydrogens to get up to four. Okay. And so hopefully you paused this and you got three, zero, one, zero, and then one, zero, zero, and then three. Okay. So remember, if you have one bond to the carbon already, then you can only have four total. So you can only have three hydrogens and then that's the pattern for you. Okay. 
So I did tell you that they were uh, these structures were um, sunscreen chemicals found in sunscreen, right? So what do these structures have in common? You should ask yourself why are they both in uh, in sunscreen, right? So we're talking about bonding and structures and stuff like that. So this is why bonding and structures and bonding is really important because uh, it helps us understand how molecules can react and or work and it can actually tell us how those, why those molecules are good as sunscreens. And then we'll definitely figure out stuff like that later, but you might have noticed that they both had rings in them with double bonds all over the place, right? Those are, that's one feature for sure. All right, so the next thing, skeletal structures with charged atoms. All right. Okay, so we do first structure drawn up here, positive, and then the bottom one is negative. Okay, so the top structure is missing electrons because that's why it's positive, and then the bottom one is got too many, so it's negative. Okay, so fill in the blanks. The point at which the lines of meet or bend is got a central carbon, and then we have terminal CH3s. Now you can see that this carbon only has three bonds, right? And so remember, it's only essentially only got three electrons around it, but it likes to come in with four valence electrons, so one less gives it that positive charge. It does not have any hydrogens on it, though. That's important to note. Now, the this structure here, which you gotta draw out all these CH2s just for fun, the terminal carbon, it actually has a CH2 with a lone pair on it. That's what gives it that negative charge, okay? All right, so when it comes to charged carbons, okay, it's important to note, it might help you better understand. Um, charged carbons, um, they lack basically the, the no, one hydrogen or the number of hydrogens that you would, they lack a hydrogen because um, the top structure, usually that carbon would have four bonds and then we would want to place another hydrogen there, but it doesn't have it. And the bottom structure, it also lacks a hydrogen, right? And so that positive has no lone pair and the negative does have a lone pair and that's why it does have that negative charge. It's got extra electrons. So there's five electrons around that carbon and usually it, carbon only has four valence electrons. And so it's like, it's got an extra one and that's why it's negative because electrons are negative, okay? All right, so what do you think it's time for? Uh, let me just copy and paste this real quick. It's time for practice, y'all. Gotta get Alan Iverson over here to make sure we're doing our, our practice right. Okay, so draw the hydrogens and the lone pairs on the charged carbons. Okay. All right. So let's draw out a structure and we'll give it a negative charge. We'll draw out another structure, give a carbon a positive charge, and then we'll draw out another structure, give it another negative charge. So again, remember when you draw when I draw these structures out, I want you to practice you got the type of question that it is. So I want you to pause the video, try the problems on your own, and then see if you get the same answer that I do. Okay? So the hydrogens and lone pairs on the charged carbons, we want to draw them, right? So remember. Typically, that carbon there would have two hydrogens on it, but since it's a negative charge, it's got a charge at all, it's missing a hydrogen, so it only has one hydrogen on it, but since it's negatively charged, it's got to have a lone pair on it. So there you go. Now, this is a positive charge. Since it's charged, it lacks one hydrogen. Typically, that carbon would have two if it were neutral, but it also has a positive charge. No lone pairs. Okay, so one hydrogen for this guy and a lone pair because it's negatively charged. And then this one right here is an acetylide, like acetylene, but acetylide because it's negatively charged. It typically would have a hydrogen, but it doesn't have it now. And it's got a lone pair, which makes it negative. 
So there you have it. All right, so here's the joke for you for today. Oh my gosh, it's hilarious. So why are low carb diets so controversial? Because they go against the grain. Ah. All right, maybe next time. Bye.